back to the news at 10. Let's take a look at some of the pictures you sent in to Eyewitness Portal. We begin with this one from the Agbara area of Ogun State, showing the state of the Agbara Road. Our eyewitness reporter uh, says uh, these adjacent roads, which will be coming up in just a few minutes, uh, would uh, that's the Agbara Aton and Sokoto. Airtel, the smartphone network. So let's continue with eyewitness reports now. We're looking at the Agbara uh, area in Ogun State, showing the Agbara Road. Uh, adjacent uh, roads, Agbara Aton and Agbara Sokoto Roads, which have become so bad that accidents have become commonplace. Our eyewitness reporter who sent this in wants the states and federal governments to fix the roads. In our next picture, we see some men on a lorry lifting electricity wires to make way for the vehicle. Eyewitness reporters worried about the risks of electrocution and asked transporters to be more safety conscious. Our next picture takes us to Benway State where we see a road that's gradually eroding. Eyewitness reporter says this is the only access road to Seadi in Makodi and asks authorities to act quickly to save it. We're back in Lagos. We're in Tejo Show where we see a blocked canal due to waste materials that have been washed away from different locations. Eyewitness reporter, while criticizing the act of indiscriminate dumping of refuse, is asking the Environmental Protection Agency to help clear the site. Our last picture today is one showing a crowded ATM terminal in Oju, local government area of the states. Uh, eyewitness reporter says this is the outcome of more and more Nigerians embracing the cashless policy. But he says this is an indication that more ATMs are required in that community. Airtel, the smartphone network. In Anambra State, Southeast Nigeria, a large crowd of women gathered for the state women's conference ahead of the 2017 governorship election. The Anambra State government encouraged women to be part of politics and promised them better days ahead. Conceived 15 years ago, today its membership growth has traversed all sectors of the nation. The Southeast Women of Substance today brought to bear its strength of being able to pull these women towards political office, empowering thousands, even some men. Themed the role of women in governance, the wife of the governor of Anambra State, Mrs. Ebele Chuku Obiano, who spoke in Igbo language, reminded the women of their importance in nation building. She reeled out the achievements of the administration, especially where it affects the women, children, and the physically challenged. If you do not believe in the performance of Governor Willie Obiano, it will be difficult to assemble you people here today. I promise you that the governor will do more. Security is better. And men of the underworld have been driven away. For the royal father of the group, Mac Anthony Okonkwo, every society is the handiwork of women. He maintains that women are the strength of the society, especially in times of trouble. We must let the powerful ladies, the Lord has blessed us with, to step in and do the wonders they are known for. Every home on earth that is in peace and progress is hand, is hand work of our women. The high point came with this surprise from the man the women have all been waiting for, Governor Willie Obiano. There will be another look at the tax system in the state. 
some tax levies will be abolished in the markets and parks. We have removed certain level of taxes for the downtrodden so that they will not be paying any taxes in the market again. Uh, up to JS3 is free. All those uh, extra levies by the headmasters or principals of schools have been cancelled. As the state prepares for election in 2017, the participation of women going by this crowd will no doubt gauge the success of the Southeast women of substance. The Federal University Lokoja has held its maiden convocation ceremony. The events attracted dignitaries, including the state governor, Mr. Yahya Bello. The occasion also witnessed the formal inauguration of its pioneer chancellor, the Emir of Fika, and chairman, Yubei State Council of Chiefs, His Royal Highness, Al Haji Muhammadu Idris. <laughs> It's the maiden convocation ceremony of the Federal University Lokoja Kogi State. <laughs> Students, friends and family members, members of the school governing council dressed in their ceremonial gowns, all seated for the ceremony. Also present is the governor of Kogi State, Yahya Bello, religious leaders and traditional rulers. Today, these 201 pioneer graduates from various departments are awarded degree certificates. Boy and Nero Samuel. Founded in 2011, the Federal University Lokoja was set up with the aim of satisfying the yearnings of Nigerian students. A point the Vice Chancellor of the University highlights. This university does, in a combination of ways, key among which is providing leadership in the development of skills and competences of members of the society. This allows them to be in positions to play diverse roles in social, economic, and political development of the nation. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, and then the decoration of the Chancellor of the University the Emir of Fika and Chairman Yobe State Council of Chiefs, His Royal Highness Al Haji Muhammadu Idris. Thank you. In his speech, the Governor of Kogi State, Yahya Bello, assures the management of the institution of his support. We may not be the highest of modernity in terms of infrastructure and amenities, but I will insist that this is state, this state offer enough for the right person to build a good life and become very successful. Some of the students who have distinguished themselves in academic works are recognized. If the institution can continue this way, and I think I can see a better future for the institution. One of the highlights of the ceremony is the award of a posthumous honorary doctorate degree of law and late former Minister of State for Labor, James Ocholi. While former Minister of Education, Professor Rukayat Mohammed Rufai, and Senator Tunde Ogbeha also backs the award of doctorate decree. Business news is next. Here's Melinda Kilami. You first. First Bank. Thank you so much, Amarachi. We begin business news with Energy Matters. The National Committee, put together by the federal government, has released its national gas policy to improve the sector. And this was revealed by the Minister of State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachiku, at the opening ceremony of the National Gas Conference in Abuja today. He explains that the new policy will give room for a simple licensing regime to grow the retail trading segment of the industry. The attainment of these projects will not only broaden the economy, related industries will also grow out of these projects such that jobs and other multiplied benefits will follow. This is the direction that we expect all of us to try and articulate and follow. It is going to be a private sector-led growth, and the sector, private sector will be drawn from, uh, most of the investments will be drawn from the private sector. The government will set the environment and support investors with appropriate interventions to bring 
the approach of suppression. Our policy challenge, therefore, is to develop a policy, uh, develop institutional uh, framework, a legal regulatory and fiscal framework that is attractive to the private sector. I must say that over the years, there's been uh, the black and neglect of this sector. We really have not focused sufficiently on the gas sector. All emphasis has been on oil production. Um, having regard to the effect of recession today, it's clear to us that if we develop the twin window of economic earnings, this country will better off. So a lot of emphasis is going to move to gas. Minister of State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachiku. Listed agro-allied company Okomo Oil has reported a 22% advance in third quarter sales today. Pre-tax profit jumps 188%, while net profit climbs some 60%. On a quarterly basis, the earnings were slightly lower as total costs goes up to 10%, with a quarterly 39% rise in net finance costs. In an investment note, FBN Quest says palm oil sales was Okomo's major driver, accounting for 27% to 2.7 billion naira, while rubber business now accounts for 13% of the sales, down from 40% in 2011. And one of Nigeria's oldest companies, UAC, has reported a quarterly earnings described by London-based exotic partners as resilient and above expectations. The company posts a 61% jump in earnings per share to 132 Kobo, while revenue increases 20% to 20.9 billion Naira. UAC's earnings before interest, tax and depreciation also climbs higher, a record 75% to 2.5 billion Naira. The report says UAC now depends less on imported raw materials and is benefiting from a rebound in its animal feeds business. The local stock market closed the last trading day of the month with a lackluster performance across the banking and industrial stocks. Millicent Walker has the numbers. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Nigeria's stock market ends the last trading day for October and the start of a new week down by 0.27%, following price declines by 20 companies amid a bittersweet quarterly results. The losers list, which is dominated by industrial bellwethers, was led in percentage terms by Transcor, Lafarge Africa and Oando, while Learn Africa, Dango Tifla and Ico lured 13 other mid-cap stocks. So this transaction was a total of 219.89 million shares worth 1.87 billion naira, all traded in 3,955 deals. The most actively traded equities were WAPIC, Sterling Bank and UBA. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Millicent Walker. Major world equities end the Monday mostly in the red. Now, most stocks struggle for direction as markets are jittery due to the U.S. elections. Business News. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melinda Akinami. You first. First Bank. Next on the news at 10, World Cup winning coach Joachim Lowe extends his contract with Germany to remain in charge until 2020. More coming up in sports news. Just stay with us.